It's just that how do I keep juggling everything to be able to at some point step back? It's just um, a matter of, I suppose, taking that leap of faith. She does need to take a step back and trust that the girls, that she's trained them well enough to move forward. I see mums burnt out every day. I don't want to see her fall into a heap and not be able to do anything. To be working those mammoth hours while trying to look after her family, while trying to look after her team, and more importantly, while trying to look after herself. Working this workload is unsustainable for Sarah. Within our business community in this great country of ours, there are millions, literally millions of unsung heroes. A lot of them are mums. They're dads or their parents that not only run their businesses, but manage their families, which can feel like a full-time job in itself. It's a lot of work. I'm constantly impressed by how, particularly mums or mum entrepreneurs, have a natural instinct to be really good and relevant in business. Many of the skills that take years to master are part of a parent's toolkit. Hi, my name is Sarah and I own Matriarch Hair Studio. I'm coming up to my 30th anniversary in hairdressing and I've had a business for the last four years on my own, but 15 years previously. So yeah, I love what I do, it's great. I was born and bred in Canberra, I love Canberra, and now I have four sons. My husband has two boys, I have two boys. We have three 20-year-olds and one 24-year-old. I fell into hairdressing uh, about a year after I left school. It was a, a salon and a business owner who I'd known for a long time, who had done myself and my mum's hair and um, she eventually was my business partner. And I walked in there as a 19 year old, I couldn't even sweep the floor. I had no idea what I was doing, but I just, I love the fact that, you know, we listen to music every day, we talk to people all the time, and we just made people feel better. And that's, I think, what I thrived on. And I plotted my way through my apprenticeship and kind of got good at it. We have a special needs son who takes a lot of our energy, a lot of our energy, um, and also a lot of our time too. So trying to be a good mother to the other boys, trying to be a good wife, trying to be a good boss. I've gotten good at being a lot of things to a lot of different people. And I have struggled to really pinpoint what is the ultimate goal? Where, where do I want this to be? So for Sarah, her definition of success is absolutely vital. Success isn't always about needing to become a billion dollar enterprise. Sometimes success means just keeping everything in balance, everything on track, having a good income, having the time and ability to spend with your family. Someone like Sarah has no choice. She can't sacrifice the time with the kids because the kids rely on her. So if Sarah is trying to work out is she successful, she shouldn't be too hard on herself. The success is actually being able to balance all these things, but also being able to step back and say, you know what, and I didn't whinge about it, I didn't complain about it. I didn't let it overwhelm me. I didn't let it control how I thought. That is success. So my question for Sarah would be this. How sustainable is what you did last year going to be for the next 12 months? That current workload, all the things that you do, how much does the business really depend upon her? Does she have the right systems people and vision to give her the flexibility she needs to take her business to the next level. Does she know what the next level even looks like? So let's find out. Hi, I'm Ellie. I've been working with Sarah for two and a half years at Matriarch Hair Studio. I would say that Sarah is very talented. She's amazing at what she does. I would best describe Sarah as superhuman. I don't know how she does it. 
um, and she's not one to complain. Sarah has a really financially successful business. She's actually built a reputation in her community where clients literally are lining up out the door. Yes, we are very, very busy. It's been amazing. However, a lot of it falls back on Sarah and it takes a toll on her. You know, she's got a lot of stuff. She's got another business. She's got, you know, her autistic son at home. She's just got, she takes on a lot. So I've been working with Sarah's son, Paddy, for nearly a decade now. And Paddy has severe autism and an intellectual disability. I would say that her kryptonite is taking on too much, trying to help everyone at the same time. Sarah's always been a ball of energy. So when I met her, she was extremely busy and overwhelmed. She's just navigating everything from herself and most people have more teammates in life than what she does but to carry the burden that she has on her own is something fairly extraordinary. The problem that Sarah has is she gets so focused being that technician and working those long hours that she can't see the big picture of being that entrepreneur and if she just leveraged a little bit in her business and took herself a little bit off the floor then she would really be able to flourish as the entrepreneur that she is. I recognised something very early on in my life that is one of the most important lessons to both life and business. You control your body. That's your biggest asset. In fact, it's your only asset. The rest are legal fictions. They don't exist. People crash and businesses crash. So you have to make looking after yourself a priority. If you don't look after this, the thing you own, you're fucked. So think about this. What would happen to your business if you burn out? How would your business run without you around? Burnout isn't pretty. It's not a badge of honor either. There's no point in sacrificing your sleep or your health and the time with your family for the sake of your business. It just doesn't have to be that way. If Sarah wants to grow her business, she needs to find a way to not just work within a business, but she's got to find a way to work on the business. And delegating is an essential part of that journey to ultimately free yourself from your business's reliance upon you and just you. Otherwise, everything she cares about, her business, her family, her future could be affected. Notwithstanding time-saving tools that Sarah uses like GoDaddy, she just keeps loading her backpack up with more and more tasks all the time. You're doing too much. I would agree. Yeah, you do how many hours a week are you putting in? How many hours are there in a week? Um, it would be nearly all of them. 168 hours. Okay, yeah, I'm probably minus six or seven, eight hours a night sleeping, it would be all, Yeah. all of it. And how long have you been doing that for? Um, on my own, four years. A big motivation was stepping out on my own. Um, so I think I've been probably Let me probably play something. Hard. Yeah. Let me play something. What do you got? My fear is that she will burn out because um, it, it's just too much for any human being to handle. If Sarah does absolutely nothing and continues to sustain the business model that she has right now, she will literally have a breakdown. Paddy requires support with going to the toilet, with showering, with eating his dinner. There's, there's, an, he basically needs 24 hour supervision. Um, and that's probably not something that people realize. So I think it's all very good and well for us to say she needs to take more time for herself, but it's how she does that, that I don't know how. She does need to take a step back and trust that the girls, that she's trained them well enough to move forward. What do you think about that? I think it sounds frightening when I hear it from other people. It's true, like when you're in it, you're just in it. You know, sometimes you're surviving by the, not even the day, you're surviving by the hour or the minute during lockdown. It, it was hard. Yeah, it was really hard. Um, not just from a business perspective. Patty was right out of routine. He was going the tonk whenever he could. Like, yeah. And yeah, when I see that, I go, Oh, yeah, that so is, that's a lot. It seems to me, yeah. from what we heard, yeah. that you probably need to create a bit of space. Yeah. Just right now, uh -huh. just for a bit. Yeah. Because you don't know what you want to do. Correct. And, as re and the reason you don't know what you want to do is because you haven't actually sat down mm -hmm. and thought it through. Yeah. I want to be able to offer people with special needs a chance to sort of grow their own self-esteem. I would like to 
present, I really enjoy taking that message to other people. I want happy, healthy family. I want happy, healthy staff. But ultimately, I just want to keep doing what I'm doing because I love it and um, just leave a legacy that my boys can be proud of and to know that I've made a difference in some people's lives. That, that's kind of all I mean. I mean, you know, how much stuff do you need? You know. So what do you think about the idea of creating space for yourself? I love the idea about creating space. And thinking about what you want to do. Oh, absolutely. I know I'm my worst enemy in delegating um, over, you know, to other stylists. It's just um, a matter of, I suppose, taking that leap of faith and going, everything will be okay, the girls will sort it out, you know, I can have one or two or three days off a week or something like that, in order to pursue these things, which will obviously encourage the growth of Matriarch Care Studio. Can you ever say, look, I'm gonna keep an eye on things, but I'm gonna give it to someone yeah. over here. Do you do that or do you just say, no, I'll, t I'll take it on? I do tend to. Yeah, I'll do yeah. it. You just keep piling more and more stuff onto yourself. Mm, yeah. I guess that's going to happen. I love it. Like it, it's well, if you like, well, maybe the way forward then is to whet your appetite mm -hmm. and experience talking in front of people. Mm. Just say, I'll do three a year. And that's all I do in the beginning mm. and just see how it is. But at the same mm -hmm. time, I'm going to try and transition myself to being on the business and not in the business. In other words, an owner, a proprietor. Yes and having other people working in the business. And in yeah. order to put those people in the business, maybe you need to think about equity plan for them. Yeah. But you've got to somehow get your senior people more involved in the business. Yes. So all yeah, of a sudden, they, they own the business with mm. you. Yeah. They get involved, they get incentivized, they get really sort of excited about it. Yeah. It's a, a form of retention, but it's better than a form of retention. It's a transition. Yes. There is an option to retain good staff and it's to offer them a piece of your business. This is typically called an employee share scheme. They align your employees with your business goals so your success is their success. And they're there to pick you up and look after you when things go wrong. By giving staff a share in the ownership of the business, you give them the onus to act with responsibility in their day-to-day -day jobs. They'll ask themselves, what's the best for the company? And take proper care with every decision and importantly, it creates an open dialogue between management and staff about the company's future. And in this situation, when you have staff with ownership in the business, you watch the cream rise to the top. Everyone is differently motivated. Entrepreneurs burn out, you know that, don't you? Yeah. It's well, the biggest issue with entrepreneurs, they burn out. Yeah. All of them. You in not, in the 2009, I burnt out. I mean, I was going a million miles on about a sick day in my life. No. I got whooping cough, I collapsed, mm. got taken off St. Vincent's Hospital in the middle of the night. Um, I couldn't breathe, my throat had swollen up yeah. because I'd been coughing so much, I I'd just cut the hell out of my, inside my throat. Yeah. Uh, they thought I had cancer, I didn't have cancer, I had whooping cough, they diagnosed whooping cough, but I'd actually scarred all myself by continuing to go to work. Yeah. You know what the doctor said? Three months off. You cannot speak, you can't go on air conditioning, you have to go somewhere which is humid weather to help heal your throat. Yeah. You know, I was on all these antibiotics and all that sort of yeah. stuff. It happens. And the world didn't end when you had that three Nothing months happened. Off. No, it was normal. Everything went on just like normal. I hate to say it, but no one really missed me. No. <laughs> I like to think they I'd did, like, but they didn't. Yeah. But it will happen, I'm telling you. Mm. You, oh, you might say, I'm, I'm, I'm no, no problem, why not? That's bullshit. It will yeah. happen. Mm. I, I just, you just don't know when. In summary, yes. create some space for yourself. Work out which model will work for you. Is it incentivizing staff with employee share schemes? Mm -hmm. Is it bringing in new people and renting out seats? Mm -hmm. Is not taking on any more clients? Say, so that's it, I've got 50 clients, that's Always. it, I don't take on 51. Yeah. Once you've, you put this uh, strategy into practice, you start to create a bit of space for yourself in a period of time and you start to think about, now where do I really want to go with all this stuff? Mm. These ambitious things, these mm. entrepreneurial things. Mm -hmm. Do I really want to give this business, give it up in terms of the effort you're putting into it and chase this dream, which is now I have the luxury of getting because I've worked so hard my whole life? Mm. Or do I want to double down yeah. on my current business? Mm. Forget about all that um, talking gigs and stuff. I'll just do a couple of those a year just for the fun of the experience. Mm -hmm. But I'll go and rent the premises next door, mm. which I know are available for you, aren't they? With the premises they next door, yeah. they can be. Yeah. Let me play this for you. 
So opportunities have come to take the space next door. And as a business coach, I'm like, oh my God, this is growth, Gr grab it, go for it. And Sarah will be like, yes, yes, I want to do it. And then she'll like, the fear comes. I have balked a couple of times at going bigger. I think taking on the extra space would mean extra staff. Where are those staff? You know, do we have qualified hairdressers to cut the hair to pay the bills? I would think she would like to expand, um, but I just don't think we have the resources to do it. Being very government dominated, I just don't think we can find the staff to do it other than growing our own. Now, I don't think you, you have fear of growing. I just think you're confused as to whether you want to or not. Mm. You don't look like a fearful person. Really. No, you, you come across really confident. It probably confident. is more confusion. Just and confusion. Yeah. You know why you're confused? Because you haven't sat down and given yourself yeah. some space to I've think got no it through. Space. Yeah. It's because you're too busy working in the business instead of having an opportunity to step back and work on the business. Yeah. Again, space. Space. Yeah. You're sitting here so composed. It's ridiculous. <laughs> you're running a business. You've got all these visions about doing a whole lot of things. Yeah. And you've got a, a, a quite a autistic son, mm. not only are you looking after him, you're creating a business for him, you want to expand it. Mm. I've got a great husband that, uh, yeah, holds all, he's the glue, yeah. Yeah but, yeah. You're, you're, yeah, but you're still out there putting things together. Yeah. So, uh, hat, hat, my hat off to you, to be honest mm. with you, like it's, it's a big deal. Thank you. But take a step back yeah. before you make any decisions about yeah. what you're going to do. Just don't make the wrong decision, that's all. No. Don't make a decision you regret. Yeah. No really pleasure. nice to meet you. Thank you so much. You're Mark. welcome. Thank you. I was shitting myself. You know that whole imposter syndrome, I think, you know, am I worthy? Why am I here? Why would anyone want to listen to my story? All that kind of stuff. I just, yeah, feel so relaxed now. Um, it's almost like I've been given permission now to take my business to the next level and some of that is to, you know, spend a bit more time on my business, which I'm, I've never really had the full confidence and 100% backing of myself, I think, to do it. I found that incredible. You, you couldn't put a price on that. It was informative, inspirational, motivational, everything. Yeah, it was awesome. So Sarah represents to me anyway, the heart and soul of so many Aussie business owners. She loves her family. She creates work for others. She gives her community a place to be heard and feel included. It's a reminder for every business owner that the purpose of your life is not to serve your business. The purpose of your business is to serve your life. Keep this in mind. As you work through challenges and search for more ways to work on your business, on your business, not in it, on it, the reward will be absolutely worth it. Take a step back. Have a look at yourself down there wrestling in the mud and make a judgment on what you're doing. Then do it.